The Lord Howe Island stick insect was thought to be extinct for more than 80 years after the trade ship SS Macambo wrecked on Lord Howe Island, introducing rats to the environment. The rats were believed then to have eaten the insect into extinction. Then in 2001 it was rediscovered on Ball's Pyramid, a rat-free volcanic outcrop 23 kilometres away. Two years later, two breeding pairs were brought to Melbourne Zoo where researchers embarked on a romantic breeding program. That program has been headed up by invertebrate keeper Rowan Cleave who recently celebrated the arrival of his 10,000th piece of precious cargo. So this is a new ah, Lord Howe hatching today. What's new today? Yep. Yep, so we hatch every morning, uh, pretty much. And what are you stirring up there? This is just the incubating medium, which is vermiculite, because I want you to have a look at the size of the egg that they come out. So they're three times the length of the egg. So their skeleton is on the outside, not the inside. What's the word for that? It's an exoskeleton once they slough it. So they slough or molt, which means they have to, once they grow too large, they need to get out of that and uh, they grow into the next stage. So basically splits down the middle. Yeah and then what they do is they pulsate out, it takes about half an hour to come out and yeah. then that's the remnants of the old, now if it's not humid enough, yeah. uh, what happens is that they get stuck that inside, skin? yeah that's the old skin there, so it's like a suit, and that's the, the trachea or the breathing tubes, the yeah. white, so, oh, so yeah. it goes from the little green one, yep, to that, so we'll, we'll track it as we go along, and then sloughs, yep, it keeps sloughing about six times through its life until right. it gets adulthood at about six months of age yeah. and then that's when they start mating and the females start laying their eggs. The hatchlings are then transferred into these enclosures where they continue to grow and develop their own odd behaviour of stacks on. So they start a clumping behaviour which you can see starting at the back there. Is that sexual in nature? Uh, no, that's um, protection in numbers. <laughs> Is it strength then, in numbers, is it? Yeah, and then they start in going into, or we provide these old bird boxes for them. Oh, yeah. This one is just sloughed recently, you can see yeah. how different colour it is, it's yeah. quite light and milky. Yeah. So it takes about 48 hours for it to harden up, yeah. and they're very vulnerable at that time. We know the main predator of the Lord Howe Island stick insect is the rat, which was introduced to the island in the early 1900s. The Lord Howe Island stick insect was thought to be extinct until a colony was discovered on Bald Pyramid, a towering craggy island about 23 k's away from Lord Howe Island. The only population there at the moment is in a plant nursery, but there are plans to reintroduce the insects as soon as the rats have been eradicated, and Rowan reckons that that can be done. How do I go with that uh, eradication program? Will they succeed or is it tough to ask? Shoot should succeed. It's been run successfully on over 300 islands around the world. This uh -huh. one is because it's um, habitated with humans. It's right. a little different. So you've got all sorts of other considerations. Holy moly. So this is them moly. then as adults. What all uh, stacks on? And this is this is what they do. This is typical behaviour of just all coming in together and clumping on top of each other as adults Studio as well. 54. <laughs> so these, at this point, they're fully nocturnal, so they don't like sunlight at all. So all we have here is an adult female, and you can see at the bottom she has this nice ovipositor here. So the egg comes out above that, what yeah. she does, she'll actually deposit that under some substrate, well, bury the egg, sand. Yes, yeah, and then we'll come out, rock, or... and then she'll actually smooth over like this her abdomen to bury the egg. Despite their amazing ability to lay up to 300 eggs at a time, the Lord Howe Island stick insect is believed to have been wiped out on Lord Howe Island by the mid-1900s. Um, presumed extinct on Lord Howe Island by the mid-1920s, certainly by the 1930s. Right. And how they got to Ball's Pyramid is anyone's guess. There's three theories. One is they were used as fishing bait, so potentially they could uh -huh. have been dropped there or dropped close to Ball's Pyramid. We know that they were found in the 1960s by an expedition in a, in a bird nest, a dead specimen. So they could have been carried and dropped by birds. Yeah. And also uh, could have drifted across on driftwood. So <laughs> that's three, but the other thing we've done here... It's the only is, way they were going to survive. Yeah, as we've done trials on parthenogenesis as well, so we know that they can reproduce without males. The successful breeding program at Melbourne Zoo has quite literally brought the stick insect back to life, drawing attention from all over the world, something you wouldn't necessarily expect from the lowly stick insect.
It, this has a great story behind it. That's right. why people are really interested in the story. When it first broke that they were rediscovered, it went everywhere from American papers to Afghanistan papers. Right. So that's how big the story was. Right. And then our first hatching on the 7th of September 2003, which was Threatened Species Day, again, that story circulated. The 7th of September? Yep. Hi, hey, we're both Virgos. <laughs> the New South Wales and Federal Governments have jointly committed $9 million to the rodent eradication and reintroduction program, and it's hoped the insects will be reintroduced to the island before 2020. So we have, we have a, again, a constant wow. cycle of... Can, can you see that mist? We'll probably go out because you'll get... But this... Because I'll get what? Uh, it'll fog up the camera. Uh, this will be completely defoliated of any leaf by next Thursday. So they come out at night. There's about 200 stick insects in here and two in another breeding facility behind. Well, I'm going to get them out. So am I thinking that when we get outside and you're going to open that this box, is, there is going to be, this is going to be the mothership <laughs> of stick. It is, isn't it? it is. I have read your mind. We need dramatic shots here, Tom. So what we'll do is we'll just... There we go. Just open up. Oh, moly. Stacks on again. So this is them. Okay. And this is pretty typical. So about an hour after dark, it will just be great activity in there. They'll all be coming out. You just sort of see these legs come out and heads come out. And right, then it's just they are not around. around. Yep. So they come out at night to eat? Come out to eat. Will they eat during drink. the day? No, they don't. Right the on. young will eat. The oh. young will molt during the day and slough. Yeah. But it's only the adults that will come out at night. How many boxes you got? Uh, there's about 12 boxes. So 12 boxes of those will eat all of that yep. tree leaves that yep. So there's about 200 in each glass house that we keep. Not all the boxes will have them in. All right. If we only had one box in there, like if this was the only box in there, the 200 of them would be in here. It would yeah. just be a, a mass of animals. And they're, well you've brought them back from the dead. Yep. And presumably they are, they are now safe, perfectly safe, unless someone convinces the Chinese that they're an aphrodisiac. <laughs> <laughs> the climax to this fascinating story lies in the hope that the Lord Howe stick insect will ultimately be reintroduced to its natural environment on Lord Howe Island, hopefully by 2020. What a story. And won't that just be a pretty magic occasion? Absolutely. And you'll Doesn't be there. get much better than that. I'll be there. Have you been to Lord Howe? I do there. No, I haven't. No. Crikey. No. If um, we can get a sponsorship yeah, deal happening. Ah, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, sponsorship deal required to get this man to Lord Howe Island. Who flies and there? this man. And Neil Mitchell. <laughs> Who flies there? Qantas. Qantas? Yes. Righto. Alan Joyce. There's a half Here's a dozen your, of us. Yeah. Here's your Elsa? opportunity to yeah, make Elsa a difference. Yeah, and Judith. We're going to take them. They do great PR for us. And remember, Alan, it's only a rort if you're not involved. <laughs> uh, half a dozen airfares to Lord Howe Island. Make a hero out of yourself. Come on. <laughs> this is great. Oh, absolutely. No one will be harmed in the making of this video. You were just telling us, uh, I wondered about your background, how you ended up with a job like this, and you said you grew up in Kahuna. Yep. They call that Kuna or something like that? Yeah, or? Kahuna. Kuna. 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 Right, eh? And then you ended up working on the land, did you say? No, uh, yeah. Farming, with farming, family farm. Right, a family farm, and then you ended up working in film with Marlon Brando. Yep, that's right. Or was that the island of Dr. Moreau, was that? That was the island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, well done. <laughs> okay, and what work did you do with him? Uh, I was a panther wrangler on that, so looking after a big cat. Occupation. Spent a bit of time with him. Occupation panther wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did old Marlon, did he wrangle a panther at all? Or? No, no, he didn't. Great man, though. What was he like? Was he a good guy? He was fantastic, yeah. Right, okay. 